Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how I made these two chairs and checkerboard. I designed the pattern myself for the chairs and I cut them with my cutting machine. The chair sides, support bar, and back are six layers thick and the overlays are three layers thick. First I'm gluing the overlays to each chair side. While I was gluing the overlay to the inside of this chair side, I accidentally put the glue to the wrong side of the piece and I didn't realize it for the longest time. It just wouldn't fit and then finally when I figured it out, I just set it aside. It was okay to just leave the glue like it was and I just went on with the right piece. Or I should say put the glue, I put the glue on the correct side. And here is how the chair looks with all of the overlays glued on. The overlays are fairly new to this pattern that I created. The sides are complete and now I'm ready to start gluing on the seat supports. I glued the seat supports first to one side of the chair and let it dry completely before moving on. I also made sure there wasn't a lot of extra excess glue and cleaned it away. While the chair side is drying, I am gluing the overlays to the chair back. This is how the chair back looks with the overlays glued on. Now that the glue is dry on the chair side, I put glue on the end of the supports and now I'm lining it up with the top of the overlay that's on the inside of that chair side. No matter how I try to approach this, it is always fiddly, but I always end up getting it too. I set it down on the table too to make sure that the legs are even. Once that is completely dry, I add in a support bar down near the bottom front. I chose not to add a back support bar this time. I'm gluing the back in now and I have to squeeze it. Since it's dry, I can squeeze those back bars open a little bit to fit it because it will be snug. And this is how it looks so far. And of course, lots of sanding. It's a sanding paradise. And now that I'm finished sanding, I'm going to paint it with matte Mod Podge to seal it. When I want something to have a wood tone, I usually start by base coating the latte from Anita's. Not watered down, but just a regular one coat is fine. Even though it's really similar to the color I usually use for the wood grain, I'm trying this burnt umber for something new. I do water down this a little bit so it's not real heavy. I cut off a large amount of crochet thread and I used cream colored crochet thread and I'm just dirtying it up with some moccasin brown from Anita's. This is my very first attempt at weaving a chair seat and now I'm anchoring it to the inside front of my chair with some masking tape. I watched several real size chair weavings till I got the hang of it. It's not really that hard but it's very hard for me to explain on camera. So I already did one row, but I'm showing you with the second row in case you want to play it back. But I really suggest just YouTube searching chair seat weaving, and that will be a bigger help because they'll explain it better than I could. This isn't really a tutorial video, but I 
thought that this might be inspiring for you to do to some of the chairs that you may be restoring or that you have. I can imagine you're probably thinking that looks complicated and I thought so too until I actually started doing it and it really isn't that hard. It's just the same pattern over and over again that is really easy to catch on to. This is my very first attempt and I felt pretty successful at it. I know I made some boo-boos but it doesn't matter. It's miniature anyway and maybe it helps give it a more worn look. And now it has me thinking and wondering what other furniture would I like to add this technique to? Maybe a bed? I'm not sure. Do you have any ideas? I made a wash of black and brown paint, or it could be raw umber, I'm not sure. And I'm just applying it here and, here and there, and I'm also letting it go onto the woven seat too, to just dirty it up some more. And here are the completed chairs. I'm so happy with the way they turned out. I wanted to drop in real quick with this and show you, um, because this, this chair, it, it's kind of special to me. Because about 10 years ago, when I was um, just starting to, well, to come back into working on one six skill since my daughter was she was already grown, but I, I missed it. I, I wanted to make a chair. So I made this chair. I didn't just make it. I had to look at a lot of chairs and do a lot of trial and error, but I figured it out. And this chair was made out of cereal box. I think it was about three, four layers maybe. I can't remember. And I even, I didn't know I was paper quilling until just recently, but I even paper quilled the little spokes back here in the chair. So, um, but I was very happy with it and I, I'm still proud of this chair that I actually created this pattern because I'm really not that, <laughs> I'm not that good of a, of a furniture maker. So it was just special to me and I wanted to share it. And, and here are the original pattern pieces. And, and they're, they're even, um, it's even a, a piece of it left from when I cut out all the layers. I guess this was extra that I didn't have to cut out. I just thought it would be fun to show this to you. And then uh, I, I tweaked it a little bit, made it a little taller so I could have some fancy tall bar stools. And then I made it shorter so I could make a patio chair and kind of changed the, the top of it. It didn't curl so much. Strangely, about, I think it was two, three years ago when I got my Silhouette Cameo uh, cutting machine. I wanted to make my chair. That was the first thing. So I pulled my patterns out and I scanned them and I didn't know how to use Inkscape, but I went into Inkscape and I traced them and then I put that into my Cameo Studio. That was the very first thing I made and that, it's like, why would I pick something so hard to make as my first project? I don't know what scale this is, but this was the little chair that I made. I, I think I tweaked it where the sides went, you know, scrunched in a little bit. But I cannot believe because at first I didn't know anything with, with the cutting machine. And, you know, it doesn't come with any instructions to tell you anything. You have to figure it out. So watching YouTube videos or whatever, it was very helpful. But it's just so funny to think that <laughs> I made this little tiny chair as my first project <laughs> on my um, Cameo. And then it's, it's just interesting to see. I, I needed a chair for the gnome house, some for that, and the, my other house. I wasn't happy with this little seat. I was going to make it thicker next time, but um, that's, that's when I took it to the 116 scale. And then this is the chairs, you know, of course, that I'm working on for the general store. So it's just really fun to see how, you know, how they've kind of, how it's kind of evolved. I do have the patio chair somewhere, but, and the bar stools, but I, I couldn't find them. I just wanted to show it to you because this pattern's, this pattern's a, something that I've been, well, I always hang on to all my patterns that I made in case I want to make them again. But something about this chair, I kept coming back to it and kept, kept tweaking it and and I envision that one day I'm going to add arms on it or turn it into a rocker but I haven't gotten there yet but maybe sometime soon
For the checkerboard, I cut out a piece of poster board and two layers of cereal box. And I glued the cereal box together and I traced out the checkerboard grid on the poster board. And then I painted in the squares. I started off with the red first. And once the red was finished, I did all of the black. I know I could have just printed something out, but I wanted it to have a handmade look and it was beautiful outside and I had the window open, so it was relaxing to me. I paper quilled some little pieces to be the checker pieces. I did 12 of each color. I just threw them all into a little paint pot with the paint mixed with a little Mod Podge and then here I'm digging them out. Now I'm creating a tall skinny barrel for the checkerboard to sit on. My crate and barrel video goes into more detail on how I make the barrels. I always love this color of the wood, but then I never stop. I always tell myself stop and I don't stop. I think it's the wash that, that makes it look darker. And one day I'm going to make some barrels without the wash. And now it's time to glue the checkerboard onto the barrel. At this point, I just couldn't wait to see how it was going to look in the general store. I wanted it to look like someone was actually, two people were actually sitting there playing checkers. So I actually played a little game of checkers. I played both sides with my tweezers to get the placement. Red was winning, by the way. After I glued it onto the barrel, I, and the glue was dry, I believe I did do a wash of the brown. Thank you so much for watching my video, and also thank you so much for your comments. I love reading them. See you next time.